everyone, this is Meg with another current release game review and today I'm going to be talking about Irrational Games Bioshock Infinite. Because I aim to review everything in the spirit in which it's given, I think a new layout is in order. So based on what developers have aimed to achieve and how they've marketed and sold their game, I'll critique the games I play, as I usually already do, based on whether or not they've delivered the experience that they set out to. A unique ride steeped in profound thrills and surprises, their words, not mine, with a central duo whose deepening bond throughout the narrative experience will capture players at their emotional core. A feeling of time and place, a vibrant, awe-inspiring world set in 1912 Colombia, a floating paradise in the sky. An unforgettable first-person shooter experience. Gameplay will take you from the roller coaster highs of skylines to action-packed combat situations where you have a wide variety of weapons to choose from. You will also master mind-bending abilities and more. So does Bioshock really live up to the sales pitch? Let's take a closer look. Now I want to start with Elizabeth. There's been a lot of buzz surrounding her character, and I can see why, but besides the fact she's incredibly helpful from a gameplay perspective, she's also really likeable, and when I say likeable, what I really mean is, I want to wrap her up in a hanky and keep her as a pet. Not only this, but she's well-rounded as a character to the nth degree. She interacts with the world around her, she wears her moods and feelings through her body language, and ultimately grows and blossoms as the story unfolds. When Elizabeth is absent, and there will be moments when the player has to journey through Columbia, alone, there's a gaping void. Sadly though, Booker is a little overshadowed by this charming heroine, which is a real shame. Troy Baker's performance is much more understated, but this subtlety works brilliantly against Elizabeth's outward kind of expression. And though Elizabeth is advertised as the story's emotional centre, I feel that Booker shares this role in his own way. In comparison to the first Bioshock, a game in which the story and character spotlight was less on the playable character and more on the supporting cast and villains, Infinite focuses very heavily on the central duo of Booker and Elizabeth. There are other expertly drawn characters, but they're less of a focal point and much more of a support network that, like the Voxophone entries, help to give the story some meat. Bioshock Infinite also deals with some thought-provoking, and sometimes taboo, themes. Imposing subject matters like religion, and politics, discrimination, extremism and corruption serve as a textured backdrop to more intimate themes of redemption and the choices we make, and it's all under the umbrella of quantum mechanics. It's certainly what I would call a thinking man's game, which there aren't enough of, in my opinion. And though this may sound a little chaotic, all of these themes are woven together effectively and cohesively over a well-paced 12 to 16 hour campaign. In reference to the ending, which I won't spoil for you, as someone not well versed in quantum mechanics, by the end there were a lot of blanks that I couldn't fill. However, playing it through again completed quite a few of those missing links, so I would recommend a second go around just to pick up on all the little nuances. Ultimately, I would say Bioshock Infinite's narrative really shines, though NPC dialogues are clearly capped and falls very short of Infinite. The story's so well crafted, so well performed and executed, that it simultaneously awe-inspires, entertains, mystifies and on occasion dumbfounds, but in the best possible way. I've never been a fan of first-person anything in video games. It always feels a little clumsy to me, and I don't like the fact that I don't have peripheral vision. But Bioshock was the first first-person game that I could actually stand, because it didn't feel like a bog-standard, kind of uninspired FPS. The introduction of plasmids really added a fresh and fun perspective. And I can say the same for Infinite, because it really doesn't change a hell of a lot. There are a few inspired additions, such as the Skylines, that add a little roller coaster into your gameplay experience, and who doesn't love a bit of roller coaster? As well as the Skylines, and perhaps because of the Skylines, Bioshock Infinite feels monumental, and much more widespread than its predecessors, though whether it actually is or not is another story. It's an exhilarating feature that adds practical uses, such as a handy escape route and fast travel between areas, 
but offers a few entertaining ones too, such as skyline strike attacks and access to hidden locations full of goodies. But for the most part, it's very similar. The player can master supernatural abilities to combat a foe, vigors such as Army of Crows and Bucking Bronco, which are all rechargeable with salts, are littered throughout the verse, resembling Bioshock's plasmids. A range of weapons, from the ass-kicking hand cannon to the heavyweight RPG are at hand, and I'm happy to say that gun combat is fast, furious, and works well, considering it has no real cover system to speak of. Even the foes you face are similar, but that's okay, because they got it so right in the first Bioshock that they really needn't change a thing. If anything, Infinite refines the original formula by ironing out some of the creases. And there truly is method behind all of this madness, not that I'm telling you what that method may be. I would say gameplay is split up into segments. Explore slash loot. Fight. Followed by cutscene slash story progression. Time in each segment feels about equal, so it never really gets stale. That being said, it does get a little bit easy to telegraph what you'll be doing next, but it doesn't feel repetitive, because you're constantly discovering new vigors and weapons throughout the game to change it up a little. One small gripe would be that I didn't like the vigors wheel. I personally didn't want to have to bring up the wheel, in effect pausing the game, then select the one I wanted to use before using it. I would have much preferred a shortcut or button assign feature. I also wasn't keen on the mandatory shield regeneration. It seemed very unnecessary, given that it worked merely as an extension to the health bar, rather than a means to actually protect. Furthermore, when the shield is depleted, the screen becomes yellow and fractured. And this serves very little purpose other than a distraction in the heat of battle. Despite the niggling little issues I mentioned previously, the gameplay of Bioshock really feels like a quintessential AAA title, and it offers the best experience within that template. It's exciting and fast, it's full of action during combat sequences, and quieter moments offer plenty of things to keep players occupied. There's variation and large levels to comb. Even the tutorial doesn't really feel like a tutorial. It isn't a chore, nor does it present a steep learning curve. It's as natural as the overall gameplay experience. Character models, fabric textures, etc. all feel a little behind the times when compared with other titles of this generation. Fitting, really, considering the theme of the game. And though this sounds like a negative, it really isn't. The game is so hyper-realistic that it really doesn't have to keep up with the very high graphical standard, leaning more towards realism. Bioshock Infinite creates its own visual rules and styles, and it wears it beautifully. The palette is vibrant and nothing short of angelic in spots. Thanks to the colonial setting, the game really has the opportunity to exercise its colourful muscles, swapping the moody, dark deco flavours of Rapture for a radiant, floaty atmosphere. Even when locations change and storylines take a turn for the dark and terrifying, the world in the sky is nothing short of magnificent. Kambi is home to the divine alright, but it's not Comstock, it's the art style. <laughs> The musical score is nothing short of incredible. There's much variety to be had. Tracks surrounding the skylines, like Battle for Columbia 2, 3, and 4, were creaky and hefty sounding, with repetitive mechanical rhythms interrupted by the occasional violin crescendo, creating a roller coaster flow of sound. Violin heavy pieces like Lighter Than Air or The Girl in the Tower offer a kind of wistful, yet off-key sound, very reminiscent of Bioshock. I could literally stand here and talk about every 50 or so tracks, but I won't, because A, I'll be here forever, and B, each track really deserves a listen, both in and out of the game. The soundtrack and score do what they should. If you haven't played the game, you can just appreciate Gary Scheiman's incredible work or appreciate the unique melodies from throughout history, but in game they enhance every moment, whether it's in play or during cutscenes. I love this score and soundtrack. I'll definitely be purchasing a hard copy if I can find one. I'll let you know how that search goes. So does it deliver? Yes, yes it does. A friend on Facebook uh, asked that when I reviewed this game, I should try and avoid waxing lyrical about it, like every other reviewer out there. But it's awfully hard not to, 
because Bioshock Infinite offers an entertaining, deep, and mind-blowing experience with really only a few minor flaws to show for it. Everything that this game promised, from a deep, unforgettable storyline and impacting characters, to a unique first-person shooter experience, it delivers in spades. Don't get or like the ending? Well, that's a bummer, but I guarantee you won't be forgetting it anytime soon. And isn't that what this game was supposed to be about? Irrational Games offers a memorable thrill ride with Bioshock Infinite, and a memorable thrill ride is what you get. So, that was it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the review. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you all in my next video, which should be tomorrow, but I don't know how long this is going to take to upload, seeing as I'm in a new apartment and internet's kind of dodgy. Uh, hopefully you can tell I'm in a new place. You know, because of the exposed brick that wasn't here before. I know, sneaky. You didn't see that, did you? You didn't even notice! Be sure to leave your comments and opinions in the comment section below concerning Bioshock Infinite, this review, anything you want really. Let's be honest, it's an open forum. Thanks again! <laughs> Bye! And before I go, really quickly, I didn't show you my Bioshock Infinite giant stand. I'm about 5'6". It's all the way up here. I just want to show that off, because I really like it. Recording of still images impossible. No, don't do this to me again! <laughs> I move a lot, and the camera doesn't like it, and it tells me so. It wasn't even turned on! Be sure... God damn it! <laughs> World! Ooh. What happened? That used to be good. Try again. Try again. <laughs> what are you doing next? I need to stop moving my hands. I look like a crazy person. I'm hallucinating. That'll do it. I'm waiting for it to beep. I would say gameplay. I'm doing it again. Really offers an entertaining, deep, 